You may remember not that long ago, or maybe it was that long ago on the channel, where I had a Robo R2 and I had a less than optimal experience with it because it only printed with half of the filaments I threw into it. Uh, I've had a lot of questions since then, and I'm now on my third Robo. Wait, my third? Ah, yes, story time. I'm Joel, this is 3D Printing Nerd. Go, go, Robo, go, Robo, go, Robo. Yes, it's true, this is my third Robo R2. It's a well-packed machine. It's, it's full of stuff, just like the second one. But you never saw the second one. Tell you what, I'm gonna tell you a story while I take this stuff out of the Robo R2. And hopefully my editor, Sean, can overlay some spiffy footage of when I took the R2, the second R2, out of the box. Well, here we go. So originally, this one didn't print well. And back in, I think it was, shoot, it was August, I think, I got, I got a new R2. It was supposedly better. Supposedly it fixed the issues that I had and supposedly it was good to go. But it was sort of a surprise when it arrived because it was right around the time of my birthday when I turned 28 years old. And I just kind of set it aside. I was, I will fully admit, I was a little bit delinquent in operating the third or the second Robo R2. And Braden of Robo, uh, he sent me a text. He's like, Joel, I'm kind of disappointed. You know, I really wanted to work with you, but man, it's you, that Robo R2's been with you for so long. You haven't got out of the box. I'm like, I'm so, so sorry, Braden. I'll tell you what, I'll do it tonight. Did it. And uh, I, I got it out of the box and I filmed myself taking it out of the box and that experience went just fine. But once it was out of the box and I started my first print, that's when I started to see an issue. And the prints that it produced looked terrible. There was this wobble that you could see in the prints. And the, the wobble, well, it, it, didn't make for, uh, it didn't make for good prints. That's for dang sure. So I looked and the lead screw coming out of the motor in the back was bent. In fact, uh, in the back, the stepper is connected to the plastic and then the lead screw is right out of the motor and it was essentially bent right there. So you could see the motor kind of gyrate, which meant that the, the head would move around and it would wobble and oh, it's just terrible. It was terrible. So I told this to Braden. I said, Braden, oh, we've got another problem. And Braden's just like, are you serious? But as it, as it turns out, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't the most horrible thing. It was just that, this was part of a batch of Robo R2s that had this bent lead screw issue. Apparently, I talked to other people in the community. It was something that happened, and it was something that I then had to deal with. So rather than produce a video about an R2 experience that was suboptimal, where I had to repair something, I went to Braden. And I said, Braden, look, the Robo R2 is meant to be take out of the box and print the first time. If we run with this second R2 that I have, the story is gonna be a repair story. And I have no problem showing you, my audience, a repair story. I know how to repair 3D printers, it's not an issue. But, and Braden agreed, I think that Robo really needed to prove itself at this point because the first one didn't print everything it should have. And the second one right out of the box had a, had a bad lead screw. And so part of the value in the Robo series of printers is their out of box experience. And so far, two out of two did not have a good out of box experience. So here's what we agreed upon. Braden is going to send a new uh, lead screw for that other Robo R2. And it's gonna get donated to one of the schools and my kid's school district. I'll repair it or I will give it to the STEM class and they'll repair it. Either way, a school gets a new 3D printer thanks to Robo. And in the meantime, we're taking this one out of the box and we're gonna see if it prints. So I, I got everything out. Uh, there's some tape, there's some styrofoam. That was satisfying. I'm gonna get this all taken care of. I'm gonna plug it in. I'm gonna make sure, I'll turn on the camera, make sure it powers on. We'll make sure the lead screw isn't bent and uh, we'll start a first print. I'll be right back. 
Well, we got we got some of the plastics and the, the stuff. This stuff. We've got the robo filament here. I'm gonna open that up. First impressions right out of the box. It looks extremely similar. Very, very, extremely super similar. And uh, I mean, that's on purpose, obviously. The bed is removable, just like before, but it's not using pogo pins. Instead, we've got a nice little connector right here, and it looks like it's got robo tack. It looks like build tack, but it says robo on it. So we're going to call it robo tack. And in the top, let's see if I can tilt this down for you. In the top, there are these red pieces on the X and the Y. And I believe those are to keep everything connected. I think if there's some pressure put from the top, things could pop out. So those red things keep it in check, I believe. Looking for the most important thing, obviously, it's the robo plate. Now my printer is complete. There is a stylus and uh, personal opinion here. If you have a touch screen, but you require a stylus, I don't think you've done it the right way. Just my opinion. Uh, the vacuum pack was still valid. Here's the, the red filament coming off right here. What I'm going to do is tuck it like this because I got to put this in and obviously it's not time to load the filament yet. It's going to go right here. And I think it goes here. Nifty. One thing to remember as well, way back in the day when I first did it, Robo did have an app available for the R2. Uh, it was only available on the iPhone. And uh, I think they caught rightfully a lot of flack because there was no Android app available. It's been a while since I've checked. This is a Samsung Galaxy Note 8. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. You search for Robo, it doesn't come up. You search for Robo 3D and it does come up. It's 4.6 stars reviewed by eight people. So this is good. This is good progress because for the longest time, Robo didn't have an Android application to match the iOS app. Now it appears they do. Here's the all important moment where we switch on the printer. <sighs> that clunk, that thud of power, that thud of progress and movement and on this just it's good okay we're gonna wait for the touch screen to initialize it does say robo on it it's handy well here i'll tell you what because setup is going to be kind of boring we've already shown that with the first one i think what i'll do is i'll get this all set up i'll get the filament loaded and then we'll start a print then i'll bring you back for that see you in just a sec Something that's come up that's very interesting and i want full transparency with you my audience and uh I'm gonna let you be the judge of what happens next. When I got the first Robo and the second Robo, they were production line Robos. When I got this Robo, uh, part of the email that I got, there was some sort of notifier on there that I thought made it apparent that it wasn't to be pulled from production. Braden did assure me that the machine was coming from production and I had no reason not to believe him. But then I was chatting with Chris Russell of Practical Printing and he had stopped by the Robo headquarters. I guess he had seen the machine that I have now there. And they were, they, I, I talked to Braden about that. And uh, Braden said they were just adding a few things, a few of the latest upgrades to the machine. And so as the story goes, Robo pulled a production unit, shipped it to their headquarters, and then added some things to it. I don't know exactly what was added to it. And then Robo did use a third party carrier to ship it to my house rather than FedEx or UPS, which, as we all know, doesn't have the best track record with large boxes containing 3D printers. And so the Robo in a box was in another box, which was saran wrapped to a pallet, and the pallet was inside of a semi-truck, and it was the only thing in that semi-truck. So a semi-truck pulled up to my house, the pallet was brought out, and the driver was funny. He said, it says it weighs 100 pounds. I don't know if we can handle it. I'm like, I know what's in that thing. It's not 100 pounds. And then we brought it into my house and now we're opening it. Whether or not you needed to know that, I'm not sure. But now you have the full story as to how the R3 came to me. Knowing that, though, I don't think it's appropriate for me to do a review of this machine. While it was pulled from the production line, it was most likely tested, used, upgraded, and then shipped using a third-party carrier. And so no one else is going to have this experience with a machine. This isn't cherry-picked, but it's a cherry blossom at the same time. 
So I just want you to know, going forward with this machine, I'm not gonna do a review on the machine. I don't think it's fair to you. I don't think it's fair to this machine or Robo. Instead, what I'll do is use it and let's hope it works. Here we go. So I'm going to approach this as if I am a new user, regardless of the information that I just told you. And because I have no setup, no information for configuration or for leveling anything, I'm going to assume that we are good and I'm gonna go and load the filament. Oh, that's right, that's right. This printer uses a stylus. There we go. <laughs> if you have a touch screen and it's not responsive or you can't use your fingers, it's my personal opinion, you've already failed right out of the gate. There's no excuse for that, absolutely no excuse. It's the last half of 2018. Sorry, Brayden. Sorry, Robo. Uh, okay. Okay, wizard. Filament load. Use this wizard to load filament. Uh, Robo PLA. Select. I didn't mean to get out the haterade or nothing, but touch screens that require a stylus don't belong on a 3D printer. It's just heating up now. I'm not gonna stop the camera because then I have to restart it again once it gets to temperature. I'm just gonna let it roll. I'm gonna let it breathe. Okay, let's see. Let's see if there's anything to print. Let's use the stylus. The stylus. Let's use the stylus. Printer? Okay, cool. And then Robo. And then wave vase, tube and cap, tabletop filament holder. Wow, all sorts of good stuff. Let's do the R2 test print. Estimated time 42 minutes. Cool. I hope I didn't miss something. Uh, connection interrupted. Uh, probing failed. You don't say. Maybe these red things are supposed to come out. I didn't see anything in the instructions saying to take them out, but uh, I don't know. It came out okay. Again, just going by the documentation. It did say specifically to remove these. It made no mention of these, and so I thought, Maybe we, uh, maybe we keep them in. Cool. That was a fun noise. I thought I smelled failure, but not quite yet. Uh, motor control, uh, raise Z. And the lead screw coming out of the back of this machine is bent. The lead screw is bent. No, no, what are you doing? No, no, don't go down. Okay, I want to show you the problem that I'm experiencing. So I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to show you the bottom, the plastic where the motor is mounted. And you're going to see it throb because the lead screw is bent. There you go. You can see that. See? Yeah, that lead screw's got a wicked twist in it. At this point, I'm frustrated to say the least because this is the third out of three Robo R2s that has failed. And at this point, I don't know what to do. I'm gonna take a break. I'm gonna have some ice cream and I'll come back up in just a little bit. Day two. Hey, we're back. Look at that. I got this piece from the Robo R2, the first one that couldn't print all the materials reliably, which we're now going to add to the Robo here. That just has a pen. Lead screw. See this one? This one turns just fine. This one it shimmies. Look at shimmy shimmy. <sighs> Alright. Set that aside. This is the one we're gonna go with. And it's gonna go in here. So now I just have to remember how to put it all back together. Which I have an idea. I followed instructions and I kept them in my brain. So this is gonna go back in here with the smooth rods. It'll go back in. I'll put the screws in. I'll connect up the motor. I'll connect up the end stop. Right there and then maybe we'll be printing. Okay, I'm just gonna leave this rolling in case Sean rolls a montage, because montages are cool. Oh crap, I lost, I lost a ball bearing because the, uh, one of the smooth rods came out. Guitar solo, I need a montage and a guitar solo. <laughs> 
No, no, this way. Oh, it's gonna work. I have no doubt in my mind. I wonder if I could pre, no, 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 I'll tell you what, put it in, just like, had it before. Got all the wiring out of the way. It'd be cool if we had, if this was overlaid with some guitar music and maybe some monster trucks. And... What else goes good with printer repair? Maybe Sean could sing us uh, the song from the, from the movie Aladdin, right? I can open your eyes, take you wonder by wonder, over sideways and under, on a magic carpet ride. A new fantastic point of view No one to tell us no Or where to go Or say we're only dreaming So watch Sean put some sort of silhouette of Jasmine and Aladdin <laughs> I do this to myself I do this to myself Ah! It ejected the screw. There it is. I know it's nothing but the back of my head, my arms inside of a machine. Sean, why is it so difficult to, it's like the, the position of the, oh, 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 never mind. I got it, apparently. Let's tighten these up and get some stuff back in place. That's been installed, the four screws have been installed. So now uh, I hook up the wires to the motor and I gotta hook up the end stop, which is even more awkward than I thought it would be. See, there it is. Oh, here we go, here we go, see? Okay, so there's the end stop and I have to get this in right there. <laughs> I got it in. Time. Okay, I'm gonna plug it in. Let's see if it powers on. Out of the box, the machine was broken. I was able to take apart another machine that wasn't working correctly, but in a different way. I was able to take good parts from that machine and put it into this machine. Just waiting for the display. I hope I didn't knock a wire loose. Dang it. No, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. That wasn't, I didn't touch. Oh, I mean, I touched some things, but. Oh, dang it, Silas. Uh, come on, please, please. Here we go. I'm gonna bring Z down. It's working. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring Z down. Okay, and then in here, there is some tube grease, which sounds like a party. But I believe what I can do is put a little on the threaded rod, the lead screw. The, that seems like enough. There it is. There's that um, stuff. I'm gonna go 100 millimeter Z, right? Here we go. Oh, perfect. There we go. There we go. I'm gonna go through, configure, calibrate. I'll start a first print, but before I hit print, I will, I'll make sure and turn the camera back on. Be back in a sec. Well, it's configured, did, did, config, uh, it's configured, configured, it's configured. And I'm gonna choose the R2 test print. We'll see what happens. So right now it's going through the auto level process where it's actually using that offset value we gave it and it's probing the bed at different points and determining uh, uh, how close the bed is to the nozzle at the different points, depending on the, the height of the bed in different areas. And that's kind of almost, I don't know if it does a mesh level, but it does some sort of leveling. Moves the extruder over to the corner and I guess it's gonna keep preheating. Uh, it looks like it's trying to lay down the, uh, the bead that will hopefully prime the nozzle. I don't see any plastic coming out yet. There it is. Okay, let's prime the nozzle. It's now letting the extruder back down to 190 as it lays this down. And this is going to be, I believe, a raft. Yep, as Braden says, Robo does love their rafts. Let's see if I do that, look at that camera, you can see it. 
So this is gonna continue building the raft and then it's gonna build the part. It's gonna take about 42 minutes according to the estimate on the screen. So I'll get some more footage of it with my phone actually laying that down. You'll see that and then we'll come right back and we'll hopefully have a really good piece. See you in a bit. Hold the phone. It says the filament, the filament has run out, but um, the filament has not run out. So, uh, okay, resume. Okay, that was, that was interesting. It sounds like it has a tricky filament sensor. Okay, it says the filament ran out again. We obviously have filament and uh, it's going right through the sensor in the back. So that's a bit of a disappointment. Let's go in here. I wonder if we can turn off the filament sensor. I have to use a stylus. <laughs> Maybe I'll squiggle the filament in the back. Let's resume. At this point, I have no idea what's gonna happen. Okay, filament has run out yet again, apparently. I'm gonna cancel the print. 20 minutes later. What I did is I, um, I unloaded the filament, I cut the end of it to a nice angle, and I refed it through the filament sensor in the back a few times. I could feel the filament sensor engaging and moving out of the way. Essentially a filament sensor is almost like an end stop because, uh, but, but opposite, right? It means once it's engaged, it means filament is present. It's like, a, like the switch is pressed because the filament is moving past it. And then once filament is no longer running past it, the switch disengages. And essentially that's saying, oh, the end stop has triggered, but just in reverse. So instead of something hitting it, it's something moving away from it that triggers it. And it says, oh crap, no filament. You should pause the print and go into a filament change procedure. But what was happening is filament was running past it, but uh, the mechanical switch for some reason was either not engaging properly, was disengaging improperly, or the filament pathway past the switch allows it to get past the switch without engaging the switch. Whew. It's going pretty quick. How's that raft look? It's looking mighty fine. I don't know if you have build tack or robo tack or whatever tack. I wouldn't think you would need a raft. I know a raft can help ensure certain things to work like thin supports and whatnot. Otherwise, I wouldn't think you would need one. Okay. Well, now I'm just not gonna route filament through the filament sensor in the back. <laughs> There's an update. There is an update because I just couldn't leave well enough alone. I'm like, are you serious? It's a filament detections? What? I mean, I thought I was gonna have to unplug something and then just kind of hot wire two wires together and then we, it would be working, but it's working. Look. Look, it's working. Here's the issue that I ran into. So this piece of paper right here, this one that you unfurl and refer to in multiple languages, it speaks about filament spool holder one. It speaks about filament feed hole one. But when it talks about the filament sensor, it says insert filament feed tube into filament sensor block. It doesn't say which side of the sensor block. And because the machine is up high, like I am up high, I couldn't see the top holes. And there's two, there are two filament detection switches in the machine. In fact, let's see. So there we go. It's that middle one right there. It doesn't specify which side to put it in. And I put it on, what side did I put it on? It's a black block in the back, as you can see. And that black block has a, a braided ribbon cable cover coming out the center. And there are holes on either side for filament. I had put it on the inner one, thinking that it was closer to the spool. But no, I had to move it to the outer one. Great, great. We have a machine that prints now. Ha <laughs> ha. And from the looks of it, it's doing a decent job. I will get some footage and we'll be back when the print is done in roughly 30 minutes. I mean, you won't have to wait 30 minutes. 
30 minutes. There's the filament detection block with that braided ribbon cable. And originally I had it over this hole right there, but that is not the right hole. Instead, I needed to use this hole right here. Yes. Hey, we're back, and the print is done. The build plate does remove. It's still attached, but if we undo this little switch right here, ha <laughs> it comes out. I didn't even unplug it. There it is, there's the print. Let's take it off, let's see. It's not flexible, but the Robotech does hold on pretty well, and this little scraper doodad does work. So, we've got a piece, and we got a raft, let's see. How well this breaks away. By default, the raft is not something I would normally print with when I had this sort of solution on the build blade, but regardless of that, oh, print pad disconnected, okay. I don't know if I'm supposed to do it while the power's on. That's probably on my bad, but I don't care because I'm gonna reconnect and it's not like it was powering it. So I didn't shock myself into, into tomorrow, which is good. Let's go back and let's, let's make sure we got everything. So. We have a machine, it had a bent lead screw. And this one right here, look at that, it just kind of goes wee. That's terrible. But because I had another robo, I was able to steal a lead screw from that and put it into this one, thanks to the instructions sent to me by Braden from Robo. Then the filament sensor was throwing us off and I couldn't figure out what was going on, but it's because there are two filament sensors, two pathways for the filament to go in the back and neither is marked, even though the hole at the top is marked one, and they tell you the top spool holder is one. Neither of those filament sensor holes are marked one or two or Batman symbol. Seems like an oversight, but it was an easy fix, and it let us print a thing. Robo, as we know, likes to print with rafts. The raft did not remove well from this piece. I could spend time picking at it, but I'm not going to because I don't care really that it has a raft, what I care about is the print quality. And the print quality is, it's really good. It's really good. I'm excited. Okay, the out of box experience was crap. We, we can obviously come to that conclusion, but I have a Robo R2 that prints well, judging by one print. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna print with it. I'm gonna print some stuff. And that way, when people ask me about this machine, I can answer their questions. Uh, if there's anything specific you would like me to print with it, please let me know. If there's any specific question you have about this machine, again, please let me know. But beyond all that, I'm gonna consider this a good outcome! Yes, 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 yes. Okay, don't forget to hug each other more because I love you guys, as always. High five.